When you hear the term chronic fatigue syndrome, people often think it's something that's a made up thing that people who are lazy say about themselves. But the truth is that it's a severe neurological and immunological disease that severely affects people and that ruins lives. In 2006, I was 16 years old, and I was a captain of the cross-country team. I was the president of the student council at my high school. I was taking uh, lots of AP classes. I was a varsity soccer player. Came home one day from school and completely crashed and slept for 16 hours straight. And I did this again and again and again, and then within a couple weeks, I realized I had to completely drop out of high school altogether. Went to 16 different doctors during that period, and none of them were able to diagnose me. After six months, I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. It was very difficult to get that diagnosis because a lot of doctors don't believe that that is a real disease. So this is a disease that's oftentimes characterized by pretty severe pain. It's also characterized by really severe disruptions of your nervous system and your cognitive abilities. People lose the ability to form a sentence. What happens to an MECFS patient after they climb a set of stairs is the equivalent of what happens to a Tour de France cyclist at the end of a, a long sprint. I'm on the board of directors for a group called ME Action Network, and it's the largest grassroots advocacy organization in the world for our disease. And recently we planned and executed about 26 protests in 26 different cities in five different nations. Folks can get out there and protest, and those protests get you meetings with high-level public officials, and those high-level public officials can do something. One of the biggest things that we've done this past year was we passed a urgent resolution through the Georgia General Assembly, which states that this is a severe health issue in the state of Georgia, and that the General Assembly is now urging state public health agencies and medical officials to do more to educate about the disease. Those types of progress are being replicated in other states. I am not the image of an MECFS patient, and I need for folks to see the ones that are hidden in the shadows, the ones who never go out, who don't have the opportunity to live lives in public. Those people are housebound or bedbound. Some of them have lost the ability to speak. Some of them have lost the ability to eat. And those stories keep me up at night. Those are the people who I want to keep devoting my life to.